We get all these empty red label boxes. These are all empty. I keep the spools when I'm uh, done with them because sometimes I put other wine on them, as you can see here. And uh, finally, I got done of paying 11 bucks per spool and bought this guy. The whole thing is uh, 1000 yards for about 35 bucks on eBay. Turn out not to be the same wine as this pools, but I'll tell you about this at the end of the video. Uh, here is how it looks on my uh, finesse uh, reels. Uh, rather shiny wine. Here's my new Legalis. 50 bucks on eBay. Theory, 200 bucks on eBay. Can someone tell me? What the difference between these two reels is? Hmm? Not immediately obvious. But back to the line. I've used this uh, line a lot now. And uh, I kind of committed to it with this uh, big spool here. So I'm gonna share my uh, opinions on this line. Now with respect to stiffness, the line definitely falls on the soft side of fluorocarbons. Okay? Particularly if you compare with any other fluorocarbon, any other than Seagar. Seagar, in my opinion, is the only brand of fluorocarbon that is kind of usable right now. Everything else I tried is almost feels almost like a wire. You can barely cast it and once you tie a knot, the strength of the line it's reduced not in half, but maybe by 60-70%. But I bought another Seagar fluorocarbon and this one is Seagar Finesse. And uh, this one is a lot more expensive. This one costs 22 or 23 dollars. I think it's the most expensive fishing wine uh, per foot that I have ever bought. And it explicitly advertises ultra sensitive and soft. But when I compared it to the red label, it wasn't really softer than the red label. Um, maybe a little bit, it's really hard to tell. Definitely not a meaningful uh, difference. Now, while it is on the softer side of fluorocarbon wine, uh, if you're coming from mono, you will find it kind of stiff and that's just you know, typical for the feel of fluorocarbon wine. Because it's denser, it is just normally a little bit stiffer than uh, mono. So uh, this one is no exception and uh, you will find it a little bit stiffer than uh, mono. The wine has, um, I don't know, normal or average memory. Definitely has uh, some memory. But, you know, except for braid, all wines have memory. Perhaps this one is a little bit above the average for monofilament, but it's not that bad, hasn't given me any troubles, and uh, it's really not a big problem, you know, but I just want to be upfront. Don't expect this to be a, a straight wine when you cast it. The next thing I want to talk about is nut strength. I tried a bunch of nuts with uh, this little scale and the best I was able to do with the six pound line was five and a quarter. Now I was able to get five and a quarter with several different nuts uh, including the knotless knot, several kind of snails and basically all of these knots where you have coils around the body of the hook so the coils uh, hold the hook uh, unlike uh, the palomar knot when i tried the palomar knot i was only able to get four and a quarter uh, pounds uh, before the line broke out of the six pound strength advertised on the label now, if this sounds disappointing to you, you probably don't know that um, 
fluorocarbon wines are notorious for having poor nut strength. So much so that, look, they explicitly advertise better nut strength. Still not good, uh, but better. I don't know what makes fluorocarbon wine so susceptible to, you know, tying knots, but that is just a fact. You're just gonna be very selective about your knots uh, if you use fluorocarbon. I've seen videos on YouTube of people, you know, trying to show you how to tie the polymer knot so the line doesn't cut itself, but you know, I don't want to be dismissive, but I, I just don't believe it because if you think about the way the polymer knot works, you know, you can't avoid the line putting pressure on itself. So, you know, you, you're never going to get uh, good strength uh, with fluorocarbon and a polymer knot. In terms of price, one of these pools, 200 yards, goes for uh, 11 bucks. You can find it for 10 on eBay if you have the courage to shop on eBay. And the 1000 yards pool is about 40 bucks or 35 on eBay. However, keep in mind, I bought many of these and they were always 0.185 millimeter. Okay, I bought the 1000 yard and this one is 0.205 so I don't know how that is possible 6 pound, 6 pound different packaging one is 0.185 one is 0.205 and this actually makes a difference. I actually tested both of them with the scale. They're equally strong. But the thinner one flies better through the guides. Especially if you have one of these, you know, micro guides. Look, this is the first guy on this rod. Look at this guide. Look at this little guide. If you have one of those micro guides on your rod, the thinner one flies better. And because the line is already, you know, fluorocarbon, a little bit stiff, it has a little bit of memory, this extra thickness on the big spool kinda affects, you know, how the line flies through the guides. But if you have normal guides, don't worry about it. It will fly just fine. It's important to note, however, that if you go on the website, what the website says is the right diameter of the six pound line is 0.205. They say this is the right diameter. But I don't think either of these lines are fake. Uh, it's just that they're probably different generations. I expect this one to be the newer generation so they can achieve the same strength with even thinner diameter. But yeah, keep this in mind if you're choosing which one to buy. So far I haven't said anything really nice about this line and yet I bought so much of it and I'm kind of committed to it with this big spool. And uh, at the end of the day, I do really like this line for uh, finesse applications in particular. And I can't find anything better that is in this price range. Then why do I like this line? Because like all fluorocarbons, this line has no stretch. Well, not really no stretch, but very little stretch. So... Uh, you know, when you cast, you have really nice sensitivity. You can feel even a subtle, you know, how subtle the crappy bites are. 
you know, you can even feel a subtle crappy bite and uh, you can have a better hook set because you don't have the stretch. But actually one of the most important reasons for me uh, to have line with low or no stretch is the ability to just break the line when you snag. I know this sounds kind of strange, so uh, let me give you one example. This is suffix siege smoke. It says super tough, but it ain't. Remember this uh, line and don't ever buy it. I got snagged with this line several times. And what happens is when you try to just, you know, break, the line starts stretching. So you keep pulling and pulling, you back up further and further, the line doesn't break. It's stretched and it's now longer. So what used to be whatever, 10 yards of line, when you backed up, you turned it into 13 or 14 yards of line. And it still isn't broken. And at the end, yeah, it broke, but now all of this line that uh, is still on my reel is stretched. It's longer, thinner, and it's compromised. Now, I don't know the stretched line. I don't know how strong it is. Maybe it was 8 or 6 pounds originally. Maybe now it's only 2 pounds. Maybe now I catch a nice fish and I lose it. And it's so kind of difficult and frustrating to want to break the line and not be able because it keeps stretching. And that's actually a problem with most of the monofilament lines when they are too thin. They just have so much stretch that it makes it difficult to, to just break. I don't want to save my jig, you know, I have other jigs. I want to keep fishing, I don't want to lose time. When I get snagged, I want to just, you know, clean, fast, break off, put a new jig and keep fishing. And with monofilament lines, it's kind of annoying that you can't even break it. So, if you get snagged with the red label, I promise you, you pull, pull. If it doesn't come up, you pull a little firmer and you break it. And if it broke close to the hook, the rest of the line is still just as strong and it's not compromised, tie a new jig and keep on fishing. The other thing that I like about the line is that if you buy the box pool, it's actually not that expensive, you know, it's it's still more expensive than mono, but it's it's kind of bearable and some of these other fluorocarbons, man, even uh, from Seagar, you can easily pay $20, $30 per 200 yards pool, even for 150 yards pool, if you look at the price of this Seagar uh, Tatsu, man, that thing is expensive, so... This fluorocarbon for me does the job, doesn't stretch, feels very sensitive, you know, easy to set the hook and the price is bearable. It's not cheap, but it's bearable. So uh, that's why uh, uh, I put it on all my finesse reels. I'm gonna make a summary page here with all of the pros and cons that I talked about. So if somebody is considering buying this line, they can see everything on uh, one place. Um, if you found this video useful in any way, feel free to hit that uh, subscribe button. Maybe give me a thumbs up. Uh, why not? And um, I don't think I have anything else. So uh, I will be signing out. Oh, uh, my 200 sub uh, giveaway is uh, almost here. I'll probably put the sign up video next week. So uh, look out for that and uh, I'll see you next time.